it in like mezzo forte. Great. Um, the more diction, the better. Just as the text flows, if that makes sense. Uh, cool. Can we do it all together standing one more time? Just see if we can rise and fall together a wee bit more.
Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Duke Memorial United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Mick. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. I'm so excited that you are here with us. Uh, first announcement of the morning is probably one that you can tell if you look up, but I am not on the screen. I am still here, but I'm not on the screen. We will have the words on the screen this morning, but we've, we're having some trouble with the cameras, uh, so just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, the cameras are working on the live stream, so hello all who are watching at home. We're glad that you are able to see on the video, and we're glad that we are still able to have the words on the screen this morning as we go into worship on this Sunday. Uh, just a couple of other announcements. Uh, the first one is that today is a Sunday lunch table day. Uh, that means that we're going to have a couple of groups uh, that are going to lunch after this. We hope that you would want to go to lunch with us. One of the groups will be led by Gare McCullough. And Gare, yes, Gare. Gare will be uh, taking a group to Honeysuckle. So if you would like to go to Honeysuckle for lunch today, um, Gare will be up here with a sign up after worship. Our other lunch table will be uh, Sid and Julie Allen, and they, they are here as well. Uh, and they will be um, having lunch at The Loop. Uh, so if you would like to have lunch at The Loop, uh, sign up with Sid and Julie after the worship service. Um, one more announcement for something coming up. Uh, for, raise your hand if you were here at the Can Refounding last Sunday. Yeah, a good number of us. A good number of us joined uh, you because there were 641 people here last Sunday. Amen. And um, yes, yes. It was the, the first large gathering event hosted by Durham Can uh, since before COVID. Uh, and with that, we got a lot of momentum and we have a lot of actionable steps, a lot of things to sign up for. Uh, the first action that Durham Can is leading is actually next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, May 15th. And that'll be at the city council meeting. And what Durham Can is organizing about uh, is a bilingual housing inspector for NIS, Neighborhood Improvement Services. So what NIS is, anyone can have NIS come to inspect their house if they think their landlord is not doing their job. But we see that it takes extra long for people who only speak Spanish or don't speak in English as their first language. And it just adds to the inequality in our city. It adds to the time, and the landlords take advantage of that. So we're going to step up and organize and, and show up and say, City Council, we would like some of your money to go to a bilingual housing inspector. Uh, if you would like to sign up for that, please uh, sign up after as well. We want to make sure that we are represented as we are doing the work of the church, of congregations, associations, and neighborhoods here in our city. And so with that, let us continue into worship um, with our welcome statement. Good morning, Duke Memorial. Good morning. As our Lord Jesus Christ calls us to love and accept every person, Duke Memorial United Methodist Church welcomes into our life together those of every age, race, ethnic background, nationality, gender identity, sexual orientation, family or socioeconomic status, educational background, and physical or mental ability. In our commitment to the reconciliation of all persons as beloved children of God, we celebrate our diversity and recognize the sacred worth and dignity of all. We invite you to join us in our faith journey towards discipleship in Christ with mutual respect, understanding, and love.
Amen. Woo. Amen, Fred. Thank you for leading in such important ways. Um, this morning's call to worship is beautiful and unique. I actually can't think of a better way to call ourselves into worship than by giving our yes to support new people among us and a new member among us. So Linda and Ralph Barrow, I invite you to come forward. And as they come forward, I want to read to you the words that Linda gave me. Today we welcome Linda Barrow into membership by transfer from Clanton First United Methodist Church in Clanton, Alabama. We are grateful for Linda and her husband, Reverend Ralph Barrow. Uh, uh, Reverend Barrow is a United Methodist pastor, and so his membership will stay in the North Alabama Conference, but we get him here. Amen? <laughs> so I'm going to invite you all to come right over here with me. And Linda, when I ask Linda uh, why Duke Memorial, the very first thing she said is, well, these are my words, but I mean, you basically said, there's some people here we love a whole bunch, right? And so, Linda and Ralph, your son, Greg Barrow, is um, one of us already, and Anna, your daughter-in-law, and your awesome grandkids, Jackson and Millie. And so, that was the first reason they, they've come to Duke Memorial. Um, but also, Linda wrote this, but also because of Duke Memorial being so open to all people, we love the music. We love the worship. We feel a closeness to God and to everyone. And so, Linda, um, I'll ask you your questions for membership as Ralph stands here with you. As a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its, its ministries? If so, say, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. I will. Amen. Yeah. And church family, I ask you uh, that if you would stand as you are able uh, to offer your words of agreement in support of Ralph and Linda. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, Establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. We invite you, friends, to remain standing as together we sing our opening hymn found on page 98 in your red hymnal, To God Be the Glory. I'm going to hug you before I leave.
And one of those great things is the ways that God's grace meets us ahead of our even asking for it. Amen? So I want to invite you as you remain standing to join me in this morning's prayer of confessing. Confessing is like walking into a dark cave, seeing nothing, hearing nothing. We do not know what we will find there. Maybe we will find the bones of things long dead. Maybe we will find the silence not at all quiet, but full of unknown wrestles. Maybe we will find ourselves and find old hurts or desires that are long dead. But it is only in the deepest dark that we can see the tiny light that is always present. That sliver that comes from an unknown place, that sliver of light that gives us hope and looks a bit like grace. It is only in the stillest silence that we can hear the whisper of mercy. Friends, let us enter into silence for a time of personal confession. I always love the silence during worship because it's never truly silent because we have so many babies and children here, right? And every one of their cries and laughter and gurgles during that time of silence draws me back to that relationship we have with our creator and sustainer, God, mother, God, father, God, parent, who again meets us in grace before we even turn back and ask for it. Yes, Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Family of faith, I invite you to cross these aisles and cross the, the airwaves and the wireless devices as together we pass the peace of Christ. If you would like to remain socially distant, please remain seated and simply lift up your peace symbol and pass the peace that way. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. <laughs> As you all make your way back to your seats, I invite all of our children and everyone who's feeling young at heart to come forward and join us for our children's time this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you this morning. I have a question. What are these right here? These are glasses. Is this the kind of glass you drink out of? No. What are these for? Does anybody know what these are for? For eyes, that's right. But why do I have them for my eyes? Really? To see. That's right. Now, I am lucky. If I take my glasses off, I can still see. I can, I can see some things, but it's a little bit blurry. Sometimes I need help to be able to see. One of the things that we're going to hear in our scripture this morning is we're going to be talking about seeing other people seeing other people, and specifically about when we look around at other people, do I just see Millie and Sarah and Ann? Do I just see you right here as you are? Or do I see something even more special when I look at you? Do I see the image of God when I look at you? Because the Bible tells us that each and every one of us is made in the image of God. That means when we look at one another, when we see one another, we are seeing God's face looking back at us. So this morning, I, and for your pew project, you get to be super creative. You have two blank pieces of paper on your clipboard. And I want you to make some tools to help you remember to be on the lookout for God's face all around you. So I made, anybody know what this is? Paper. It is paper, yes. But if you use your imagination and you hold it up like this, it's like a spyglass, that's right. So I can look through it and it can, remem it can help me remember that I am looking for God when I look around. And then I said, you know what? I sometimes need to be reminded in more than one way. That's right. So we also can, I also made a pair of paper glasses. So I can hold these up like this and it can help me remember to be looking for God wherever I go. So on the outside I wrote things like, God is love. I can see God all around me. We are all made in God's image. God is here. So I want you to create your own tools for you to be able to take home and help you remember that when you look around, when you listen and you hear voices around you, when you feel the love of somebody else's arms around you, that not only are you experiencing that person's love, but you're also experiencing God's love. Okay? Before I hand you your pew projects, can you please pray by repeating after me? Let us pray. Dear God, Thank you, Thank you for being, for being all, around us. all around us. In every face, In every face we, see. we see. Please help us, Please help us. <coughs> to use all of our senses to find you in our world. We love you, God. We love you, God. Amen. Forward.
join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as those scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to us today. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, We do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know how him and how and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do not, do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works of themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Glory to God. God. Amen. 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 Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for coming before us. For loving us before we are ever aware of your love. For showing your grace even when we do not know it's there. God, we pray that we will hear the words that you would have us to hear. And that your grace would be in the midst of us all. Amen. John 14 Uh, The chapter that Josh just read for us is the first of four chapters in the Gospel of John that make up what is known as the farewell discourse. Jesus is about to bid farewell to his disciples, preparing them to live without him. Jesus is attempting to offer peace and comfort to the disciples. It is no wonder that the beginning of this farewell discourse are the verses that we often hear at funerals. Do not let your heart be troubled. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? We often claim these words and attach them to a hope in the life after this one. I know that it's what I do. I find hope in knowing that Jesus is preparing a place for me. I spent the first years of my childhood growing up in a small trailer. When my mom would play the gospel songs that said, I've got a mansion on a hilltop, I claimed that mansion for me. But when Jesus says these words, do not let your heart be troubled, he's not preaching a funeral sermon. He's not preparing people for 
their mansion in the sky. He wants more for the disciples than a dream for the future. He's telling the disciples about a new way to live. Jesus is saying life with God is possible through me. A dwelling place in the house of God is attainable through me. An accessibility to God that you previously thought was impossible is now possible because I am with you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is a message of comfort for the disciples, yes, and it's a message of hope for us, that God is not as far away as we had once imagined. The phrase that we translate as God's dwelling place is actually from the Greek word manai, an abiding place. Jesus abides with us. And because of that, we abide with God. Greater still, God abides with and in us. So yes, these words can offer comfort and hope in the face of death. But I do believe that that is only half the story. These words of Jesus offer hope in the face of life. And sometimes that's where it's almost harder to find hope. I wonder what if we heard this message of hope not with our eye on the future, not with our brain on what our mansion might look like. But I wonder if we heard these words for here and now. I wonder if we heard these words for what we are experiencing today. Listen once again, but not to the future, but to now. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Abide with God. God has a place prepared for you. Abide in me. Believe not only in that mansion. Believe because God is offering a dwelling place here and now. Friends, we do not have to wait until we die to rest in the presence of God. When this farewell passage of Jesus is not being used to comfort those who are grieving, it's often used or quoted as a verse that would talk about the exclusive nature of our faith. In verse 6, we see Jesus say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Modern ears often take that to be an indictment on those who do not believe, on those who do not have faith or who ascribe to a different faith tradition than our own. If we read past this verse, we see that Jesus is talking about a God who is already present with the disciples. A God who is within Jesus, a God who is within the disciples as they sit waiting to hear about this way, truth, and life. Even before they know that Jesus is the way, Jesus is with them. And even before they are aware of God's presence within, God is present. So I think we should be careful about prescribing the words of Jesus as a formula to get to God when Jesus is actually saying God is already here. God is abiding in us, with us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. As Methodists, we have a word for this truth. Provenient grace. A grace that comes before we are even aware that it is here. 
I find comfort in the words of Thomas when Jesus tells the disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas says, the way to where? I don't know where you're going. I don't know what way you are talking about. And Philip, he follows up Thomas's lead. He says, All right, Jesus, just show us God, and then we'll trust you. They want the way to something, but they're not sure what the way is or where they are going. They don't know how to get to God. They don't know what the way, truth, and life is. And Jesus, of course, responds, you have already seen God because you have seen me. The disciples knew the way, the truth, and the life even before they were aware that they knew the way, the truth, and the life. The disciples were already on their way with Jesus, even though they did not know it yet. God was with them, abiding in them. God prepared a dwelling place for them, not just after death, but in life. When Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus is telling the disciples, telling us who he is. He is in God, and God is in him. In the Spirit of God, she is in us. The very nature of God is inclusive. A Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the very essence of a triune God, three in one, is a God who makes space for others. Jesus has made a way for us, for everyone, to experience God intimately, to no longer see God as far off, but to see God in our neighbor. To see God in those who dwell with our creator. Who are in the presence of God, abiding with God, here and now. Not simply waiting for eternal life, but experiencing the eternal life that Jesus has promised. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, we have a promise to experience God after death. But the hope that is in this passage and in the words of Jesus is that God has provided us with eternal life now. Even before we are aware, even before we know that God is with us, God is with us. Even with a neighbor who we don't always see God with them, God is with them. Even when neighbors see us and they don't see God in us, God is with us. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not just after death, but here and now. As we prepare to take from the cup the bread of life, We receive a gift that has already been prepared. The table is ready. So come, take, see and feel the grace of God. Even if you have not felt aware of it thus far, I assure you God is with you. Amen. Some of our responses to the table will be words that we speak. Some of our responses will be words that we sing together. That music for our sung responses is found on page 17 in your red hymnal if you're interested in the music for those words. And so, friends, together we come to God's table. For the joy of human company, shared stories, friendly laughter, and conversations that change us, Thanks be to God for a place that spans the ages and is home to all who gather here. Thanks be to God for the wonder of life and the decision of God to come among us. Thanks be to God. 
We love you, holy God. We love you for the feast that is life. Friendships and laughter, intimacy and trust, moments of discovering deep truth, hidden potentials we never knew we had, and beauty. Serene beauty and rugged beauty. And the world we, you have crafted in the words, the sounds, the colors with which people reflect and explore life. We love you, holy God, for not leaving us alone. Because in Jesus you became tangible. Hands reached out to you. Tears touched you. Generosity stirred you. And you, Jesus, reached out to us. Even before we were aware, you dwelled with us. Even when we felt far away, you abided with us. Not just in heaven, but on earth. That is why we are here. That is why across time and eternity we cannot keep silent. And therefore, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. As we open ourselves to your generous hospitality, let your spirit move among us and be present in the food we share so that this bread and wine become for us the living presence of Jesus. Open our eyes to see Jesus, our ears to hear Jesus, our hands to hold Jesus, our hearts to receive Jesus, our souls to cherish Jesus. As Jesus broke bread, we break this bread. As Jesus took wine, we take this cup. Yes, through this table of bread and cup, we look toward the future with hope. We are reminded that our past lies behind us. That the grace of God has overcome our fears and our brokenness. We are no longer afraid. We therefore offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus, that we may be for the world the body of Jesus redeemed. Yes, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, with each other, and in ministry for all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. For your son Jesus, with the Holy Spirit and in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. As we prepare to say the Lord's Prayer together, I want to lift up a few joys and concerns. I am grateful again and again for the incredible, creative leadership of this church. Um, you leaders who volunteer your time, not just to show up and do the work, but to really lean in with creative imagination that's far bigger than us, because you're believing in what we cannot yet see. Yes, I'm talking about our finances 
And yes, I am grateful for the giving that you are giving outside of your money, also with your prayers and your time. Um, and I'm grateful that the finance team has opened up the pledge campaign again last week and this week and inviting us to lean in. Uh, we're excited to reopen that campaign as we seek to raise $73,000. Um, we are asking for those of you who have already pledged to consider increasing your pledge by 10% if that is within your means. Um, we're looking for 20 new people to pledge $1,000 or $125 a month and 10 new people to pledge $500, which is $75 a month. Um, and you can look for the message around this campaign in your e-news. I got a letter. Many of you are getting letters. Or you can see myself or Mick or Pastor Jennifer as well after worship if you would like to connect with us in that way and lean in as we imagine more here at Duke Memorial. Um, as we think about, I also want to lift up, by the way, an incredible joy that I had this morning of getting in the church bus and driving all over Durham with seven of you. We have 11 people uh, discerning membership here, and seven of them went on a bus tour this morning as we considered um, the beauty of Durham and the really tough, broken parts of Durham and prayed together about our call to do repair work and our call to justice in our city. What a joy to be a part of a body of Christ in that way. And a concern, today we lift up Pastor Jennifer, um, who will have outpatient reparative ankle surgery this Wednesday. Uh, we pray for her, and we pray for Seth and Teddy and Lucy. I'm looking for all y'all. They're spread out. They're down the floor. I love this. We pray for all four of them ahead of this surgery and in the weeks to come as Pastor Jennifer is in recovery. That recovery time will be about, uh, well, she'll be out of the office for about two or three weeks. The recovery will be longer than that. She covets your prayers. I appreciate you reaching out to her and Seth and the family um, as she enters into this beautiful, important surgery. And now, friends, I invite you to join your voices together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As the communion servers come forward, I want to remind everyone here that this is not Duke Memorial's table. This is not the United Methodist Church's table. This is God's table. All of you who would like to come, uh, feel, feel free to come as you feel led, if you feel led. We won't have ushers letting you out. You just come whenever you're ready. And again, if you feel called to come, to hold your hands out to receive the bread, to then dip it into the cup. You're invited as well to kneel at the rail for prayer if you would like. Any monetary gifts left on the rail or given online today to our Good Samaritan Fund goes to help people pay their rent, buy groceries. I want to say thank you because I witnessed a pretty bad car accident recently and I was able on behalf of you all to help be a part of that story financially because the person in the one car can't work right now. And so Duke Memorial is helping that person with their groceries and their rent. This is an incredible way to be the body of Christ through our Good Samaritan Fund. Thank you for the amazing ways you give. If you would like to receive communion individually, you can come over here and receive an individual communion set. There's also gluten-free communion on the rail. All are invited to come as we give thanks for God's hope that is not just for the next life, but begins again right now, right here today. Thanks be to God.
Good and holy God, we give you thanks for this food, this meal that sustains us, not for the next life, but for this life. Holy Spirit, pour out through this meal and go ahead of us back into this world. For we need to meet you there, and the world needs to see you in us and through us. God of expansive grace, God who does not limit us to certain ways of believing and certain faith structures, oh Lord, we give you thanks for the hope that we find in you in this moment and for the next moment as we again have our eyes open to see and to recognize the ways that you are alive and moving through justice, yes, and love, yes, and mercy. In your name we pray, amen. Ah! Uh -huh. 
Amen, amen. So, um, Jennifer, I love, you know, I wear glasses as well. So the whole service, I'm thinking about, like, where's God? Where can I see God? Do I have eyes to see God? And then Ella comes up to the rail early for communion. There Ella is. And I leaned down and said, do you want to serve communion? And she said, yes, I do. I'm grateful for your yes, Ella, in the moment and for the ways that you teach me how to follow the Holy Spirit's prompting. By the way, happy 10th birthday. Playing when she was born. Stop it. What? Okay, born. Holy Spirit. Everybody put your glasses on. God is everywhere. That hymn was playing when Ella was born. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Mom. How meaningful is that? All right. Mark Miller, what are you, what are you doing up here? <laughs> oh, yeah, you got something for us? There's no mic here. Borrow my microphone. Here we go. Here we go. Um, I'd like to invite everyone to join us for lunch um, at either Honeysuckle in Lakewood, hosted by Gare McCullough, or at The Loop on Broad Street, hosted by Julie and Sid Allen. Just come up after worship to put your name on one of the lists, and if going out to lunch is not in your budget, then see one of our pastors and your lunch will be provided. Thank you. Thank you, Gare and Sid and Julie, come on down so that you're ready down here with those clipboards. I'll see y'all at lunch, Mick. Yes, and we hope to hope that you sign up for one of our lunch tables. Also hope that if you uh, would like to sign up for our next CAN action, the one that City Council, not this Monday, but the next uh, for the um, uh, bilingual inspe housing inspector, uh, you can sign up for, with that for me, and I'll get you more information about that. That'll be 7 o'clock next Monday. Let us receive this benediction and blessing before we leave. Before us, it is blessed. Behind us, it is blessed. Below us, it is blessed. Above us, it is blessed. Around us, it is blessed. As we set out with Christ. Our speech is blessed as we set out for God. With beauty before us, with beauty behind us. With beauty below us, with beauty above us. With beauty around us. We set out for a holy place indeed. Amen.